كثير من ينتسبون إلى السلف يقولون نحن سلفيون لكنهم لا يعرفون مذهب السلف I want you to contemplate on the hadith Qudsi which is found in the Sahih of Imam Muslim on the authority of Abu Dharr Al-Ghifari radiallahu ta'ala an where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah the Mighty and the Majestic said Ya ibadi إِنِّي حَرَمْتُ الظُّلْمَ عَلَى نَفْسِي وَجَعَلْتُهُ بَيْنَكُمْ مُحَرَّمًا فَلَا تَظَالَمُوا O oh my slaves, Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala is addressing his slaves. O oh my slaves, indeed I have made inviolable, impermissible ظُلْم oppression upon myself I have made what haram upon myself Allah is saying I have made haram oppression upon myself and I have made it between you haram impermissible Therefore, do not be oppressive. My believing noble brothers and sisters, if it is that we contemplate on this hadith Qudsi, then we would come to realize as Ahlul Ilm, they inform us that here Allah Ta'ala is informing us of His perfect and complete justice. That He Ta'ala being Al Malik the king the one who has authority over all affairs and who has the ability to do whatever he wants that allah the mighty and the majestic he said inni haramtu dhulma ala nafsi that i have made haram upon me oppression allah does not possess the sifa, the attribute of being oppressive. And when we say oppressive, we say oppressive to all of humanity. As Allah, the mighty and the majestic, he informed us in his noble and glorious book, the Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَظْلِمُونَ النَّاسَ شَيْئًا وَلَكِنَّ النَّاسَ أَنفُسَهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ And indeed, Allah, the mighty and the majestic, he does not oppress the people anything. Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala is telling us about the people and nas all of humanity. He does not oppress the people anything. However, the people themselves, they are the ones that are oppressive. And Allah the Mighty and the Majestic informed us in his noble and glorious book, وَخَلَقَ اللَّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِالْحَقَّ وَلِتُجَزَى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ And Allah the Mighty and the Majestic has created the heavens and the earth in truth. And each person will be requited, he will be recompensed for his deeds. And no one will be what? No one will be dealt with unjustly by Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. As for injustice and oppression, my believing noble brothers and sisters, as for injustice, oppression, evil deeds, and the evildoers. And I say this and I want us again to reflect upon ourselves from the oppression that we incur and that we put upon the people every single day, every single week, every month, year after year, we hear of Muslims oppressing the people. We hear of people breaking into the houses. We hear of people dressing up in police garb and using police cars. And they go to the people and they shoot down their doors and they kick it down. We hear of Muslims kidnapping those non-Muslims. Incurring fear and terror in the people's hearts. We hear of those Muslims that go down into the drug blocks because they possess weapons and they take away the people's drugs. 
proclaiming to be upright Muslims, proclaiming that they want to clean up the area, thereupon taking the drugs themselves and selling it to the people, oppression to the people, harming the people, killing the people, and then harming the society, harming our youths, harming our children, harming our children, whether they be Muslims or non-Muslims. Every single day, we hear of Muslims who ascribe to Islam. They go into the bars and they hold up the people, robbing the people in the name of Islam. Oppression. The culture of the people in Trinidad. So as for injustice and the oppressors, the evildoers, then Allah wa ta'ala without a doubt has mentioned the affairs through several threats in his book, the glorious book, the Quran. As Allah the Mighty and the Majestic, he said, إِنَّمَا السَّبِيلُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ يَظْلِمُونَ النَّاسِ وَيَبَغُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ The way of blame is only against those who oppress men and wrongly rebel in the earth for such there will be a painful chastisement and Allah wa ta'ala informed us in another verse wa sayya'lamu alladhina dhalamu ayya munqalibi yanqaliboon and soon will the wrongdoers come to know the end that they should reach every individual no one will escape if it is that we do not turn back and seek the forgiveness of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And Allah the mighty and the majestic, he informed us in another verse, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ إِنَّمَا يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ لِيَوْمٍ تَشْخَصُ فِيهِ الْأَبْصَارِ Do not think that Allah, when you see all of these evil deeds happening, do not think that Allah for one second is heedless of the affairs. That Allah doesn't know about the affairs. That Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is ignoring the affairs. Do not think that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has this sifa, this attribute of being heedless of what? Of the evil deeds in which the evil doers are engaged in. But Allah, the mighty and the majestic, He is merely granting them respite. He is giving them time until a day when their eyes will be filled certainly with terror yawm al qiyamah the day of standing ayyuhal mu'minun ibadallah o believers slaves of allah oppression would be darkness on the day of standing oppression will be darkness on the day of standing and when i say this i say this for abdul haq first i say this for myself first in my dealings with the people, in my dealings with my wife, in my dealings with my children, in my dealings with my neighbors, I say this to me first, and it is for everyone that is here, and you should not be sleeping. Because our culture teaches us to be oppressive, for wallahi, everyone that is here, they know this. Oppression every day. Oppression, lying, cheating, stealing, every day. Don't think that you are excused. I am not excused. So when I talk about oppression, I'm referring to myself first. That oppression on the day of judgment will be darkness for the oppressor. Whether it be the smallest multitude, the smallest atom weight of zulum of oppression will be darkness on the day of standing. The smallest deed, the smallest lie, the smallest cheat, the smallest word that we say against an individual that is not the truth and we lie, the smallest misleading anyone is oppression. And this is what we do. This is how we live in Trinidad. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith that is found in the collection of Imam Muslim on the authority of Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala an ittaqu dhulm and fear oppression fear oppression 
Fear it. Men who hit their wives, men who impregnate women and they leave them afterwards, fear oppression. Impregnate the sisters and leave them afterwards to fend for themselves, fear oppression. Ittaqo zulma. Fear oppression. Fa'inna zulma zulumat yawm al qiyamah. For indeed, oppression is darkness on the day of standing. It is darkness on the day of standing. When the believers that were patient with the trials that Allah gives them in this life, they will come on the day of judgment and their faces will be bright. But those that were oppressive, when they come before Allah, their faces will be black and dark. Black and dark. Ittaqo zulma. فَإِنَّ الظُّلُمَاتُ فَإِنَّ الظُّلْمَ الظُّلُمَاتٌ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Fear oppression. Fear oppression. For indeed oppression will be darkness on the day of judgment. My beloved brothers and sisters, if this wasn't enough for you, if what we mentioned so far wasn't enough for you, then I want you to contemplate on the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the question of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Which is found in the Sahih of Imam Muslim And the Tirmidhi wa Ibn Hibban And other than them And the authority of the companion Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala an Where the messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam One day One day he asked the companions Radiallahu anhum Atadaruna Mal muflis do you know who will be the bankrupt one on the day of judgment? Atadaruna mal muflis. Do you know who will be the one that will come on the day of judgment as a bankrupt individual? The companions radiallahu anhum, they said, Al muflisu fina ya Rasulallah man la dirham wa la mata'a. As a normal individual, when they hear this, they would say the same thing. O Messenger of Allah, the bankrupt one from amongst us is the individual who would have no dirham. And he would have no possessions, no commodities, no wealth. This is the understanding of the companions عنهم, when it is that he asked them, Atadaruna mal muflis, who is the bankrupt one? So the companions, they said, well, the bankrupt one is the one who has nothing, no money, no commodities, no possessions. Then the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Inna al-muflis min ummati yati yawm al-qiyama bi salatin wa siyamin wa zakatin. Subhanallah, listen, listen, brothers. Listen. Indeed, the bankrupt one, min ummati, from which ummah? From my ummah, meaning from the Muslims. In al muflisa min ummati yati yawm al qiyama bi salatin wa siyamin wa zakatin. That the bankrupt one from my nation will come on the day of judgment, the day of standing, with what? Bi salatin wa siyamin wa zakatin. They will come with salah, they will come with fasting. And they will come with their zakat. Allahul Musta'an. Wa yati kad shatama hadha, wa kadhafa hadha, wa akala mala hadha, wa safaka damma hadha, wa daraba hadha. Listen to what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said next. But this individual, he abused this one. And he falsely accused that one. And he spilt the blood of that one. And he unlawfully took the wealth of another and he striked or hit another. Does this sound familiar to us? The one who comes with salah, comes with fasting, comes with zakats. But then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said what? And he abused this one. He abused this one. Taking advantage of people, male and female. Allahul Musta'an. And he falsely accused that one. And he unlawfully took the wealth of another. 
and he spilt the blood of another, killing people and hitting people, harming them. Then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, فَيُؤْطَى هَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِ وَهَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِ So because of his evil deeds upon the people, then this one is going to get from his good deeds. And that one is going to take from his good deeds. فَإِنْ فُنِيَتْ حَسَنَاتُ قَبْلَ أَنْ يُخْضِيَ مَا عَلَيْهِ So when his good deeds are what are depleted, meaning that all the people that he oppressed, he has to give up all of the good deeds that he did. So when his good deeds are depleted, what would happen to this individual? أُخِذَ مِنْ خَطَايَاهُمْ فَتُرِحَتْ عَلَيْهِ ثُمَّ تُرِحَ فِي النَّارِ all of his good deeds are depleted, then he will take the evil deeds of those people. The evil deeds of those people will be thrown upon him and then he will be taken and flung into the fire of hell. My believing brothers and sisters, rahimakumullah, fear Allah, the mighty and the majestic, the fear that he's deserving of you. And do not oppress one another. And the reality is, so long as Allah wa ta'ala has given us life, then these affairs can be corrected. Then these affairs can be rectified and corrected. And the oppression is so much that it has taken over our lives that we see oppression in our society today and the hearts are not affected anymore. And that is because the hearts have become hard and it repels good things. And it was earlier on in the week that I was speaking to the brothers in the community and I'm going to ask the brothers and sisters that are here and present the parable to them or the question to them. If it is that you, the believers, had an opportunity to know your status with Allah, if it is that you had the ability to find out your status with Allah, would you want to know it or not? If you have a companion, you would want to know your status with that individual. If you're newly married, you would want to know that your wife loves you. You want to know your status, so you're trying to find out. If it is that an individual has fear of Allah, he would want to know his status with Allah wa ta'ala. And that is why Imam Ibn al-Jawzi, he said that if it is that you want to know your status with Allah, then look to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows you to do with your time. Look in your lives and see what Allah allows you to do with your time. Am I doing things that are impermissible, haram? Am I speaking to women? Am I wasting time? Am I smoking drugs, marijuana? Am I lying? Am I cursing? Am I praying my salah in the masjid? Am I being a proper and good, upright father, a role model? Look to see what Allah allows you to do with your time and you would know your status with Allah. And that is because the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man bihi khayra, deen. Whomsoever Allah wants good for, he gives that individual understanding of Islam. He gives that individual understanding of Islam. And when it is that we inspect and we look into our country, and I'm speaking about Trinidad because this is where we live and this is where we face and we wake up every day and face these trials and, and hardships. And this is where we interact with the people and we hear and this is where we face our fellow citizens, non-Muslims. Our situation as it relates to knowledge and Islam is very deficient and very weak very deficient, very weak. I want you to contemplate on the narration that is collected by Imam Ahmed in his Musnad and the authority of Abdullah ibn Unais radiallahu ta'ala an where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يَحْشُرُ اللَّهِ الْإِبَادِ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ أو قال الناس أُرَاتًا غُرْلًا بُهْمًا that Allah wa ta'ala would resurrect the slaves or the narrator of the hadith. He said Allah would resurrect the people on the day of standing. How? Listen carefully. He would resurrect them naked, uncircumcised. Buhman. 
The companions, radiyallahu anhum, they said, وَمَا بُهْمًا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And what is the meaning of بُهْمًا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَيْسَ مَعَهُمْ شَيْءٌ Meaning that they will be resurrected naked, uncircumcised, and they would have nothing with them. Nothing. They will be stripped of everything. And then they will be called out by a voice. And this voice will be heard by the one that is far. The one that is far would hear this voice just as clear as the one that is close. And this voice, it will say, Ana Dayan, Ana al Malik, I am a Dayan, I am the true and final supreme judge, Allah the Mighty and the Majestic. I am al Malik, I am the King. Then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, listen carefully, لا ينبغي لأحد من أهل النار أن يدخل النار وله عند أحد من أهل الجنة حق حتى أقصه من ولا ينبغي لأحد من أهل الجنة أن يدخل الجنة ولأحد من أهل النار عنده حق حتى أقصه من and there is no one from the people of where? Of hell. That would enter the hellfire. And he has a right. The people of hell, the kuffar, those that are destined for the hellfire. No one would enter the hell from these people that would be destined for the hellfire. And he has a right with one of the people of paradise until I, Allah, set off that person's rights from oppression. And the situation will be reversed. And there is no one from among the people of paradise that would enter paradise. And he owes a right to one of the people of the hell until I set off his right. And listen to what the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said next. Hatta latma. Not even if it is that it was a slap on the face. The smallest deed, Allah will set those affairs straight. He would return the rights of the one that is oppressed. Then the companions, radiallahu anhum, they said, كَيْفَ وَإِنَّنَا نَأْتِي أُرَاتًا غُرْلًا بُهْمًا How is it, O Messenger of Allah, that we will come naked, uncircumcised, and with nothing? The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, الْحَسُنَاتِ وَالسَّيِّئَاتِ The good deeds and the bad deeds, they will be weighed. And the rights will be given to the people. And we will come some of us with nothing, nothing to help us on that day. Now we move on to the next part in closing, and that is for those people or believers who face oppression at the hands of the people, meaning the non-Muslims, because this is the thing that most of the Muslims here focus upon. All the oppression that we face, Rasta city and Muslims, all the oppression of the king or the oppression of the leaders, this is how we think as Muslims. We don't think about our zulum first. We always want to put the blame on someone else for our deficiencies and our shortcomings and our trials and tribulations. So as for the believers who face oppression at the hands of the oppressors, at the hands of the people, then we have many promises from Allah. And this is the aqidah, the correct aqidah that we're supposed to be upon. Not that we turn, well, what about the leaders and what about this one? We have many promises from Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about the outcome and the endings of the oppressors. And we have seen this, we have seen the results of those nations in the past. Like Fir'aun and Haman and all of these evil oppressors of the past. That Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala as He said about Fir'aun, وَجَعَلْنَاهُ salafan wa mathalan lil akhareen. And we have made them or him, Fir'aun, a past nation and an example for the nations that come afterwards. That Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala drowned him because of his oppression towards the people and harming the people because of Tawheed. And in our times, if it is that we carefully inspect and we look to places like China, we look to places like China as we were discussing this morning after Fajr, who have been putting our Muslim brothers and sisters and children in camps and have been killing them and abusing them and oppressing them 
and raping the women. All forms of oppression that we see. Then as people who have sound creed, we don't rely and we don't call upon the leaders. But we call upon the one who is just. We call upon Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, the one who has control over all affairs. And look at the result today. Let China be an example and lesson to everyone living who believe that the affairs are in the hands of those who have power. al jabaruts the might, the power, the jurisdiction, the dictatorship, it is not for the people, but it belongs to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. So whoever tries to suppress and harm the Muslims and Islam, today there is an epidemic in China. An epidemic in China and a virus that is uncontrollable. And this is how Allah the Mighty and the Majestic, He works when it relates to oppression. That alhamdulillah, the believers, they turn to Allah and they call upon Allah and they beg Allah. There is no need to come out of proper aqidah and proper understanding of Islam and blame everyone and call for all types of oppressions and, and, and more things that will cause havoc and that will cause instability. Today, the people in China are facing an epidemic, a virus which is being referred to as the China Corona. Allah Musta'an, which Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is the one who has control over all affairs. Allah is the one who permits epidemics and sicknesses and Allah is the one that can destroy and Allah is the one that has built. And this Jabarut, this kingdom, this majesty, this power, this jurisdiction is only for Allah. It is rapidly killing the people and multitudes more are affected in the hospitals with sickness. And this epidemic may lead to a global epidemic. A global epidemic. So we ourselves, related to our own actions, reflect and advise those who love to oppress, to contemplate on who the real power belongs to. And that is Allah, the mighty and the majestic, as he, Jalla Jalalu, he said, وَكَذَلِكَ أَقْذُ رَبِّكَ إِذَا أَقَذَ الْقُرَى وَهِيَ ظَالِمَةً إِنَّ أَقْذَهُ عَلِيمٌ شَدِيدٌ Such is the seizing of your Lord, that when he, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, does seize the towns immersed in wrongdoing, his seizing is going to be painful and terrible. Fear Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, my believing brothers and sisters, and do not be oppressive.